Josh here, British Strongman Coaching. And I'm going to show you how to design a strongman block of training for yourself. Very, very simply. So what I've got here is I've got a, got a bit of a template that we can that we can use. So I'm going to put in deadlift first. Deadlift's a staple. And then I'm going to put in deadlift assistance. Or we can say deadlift secondary. And then what else we're we going to need on the we're going to need some grip. So I find that say grip can work in well on the on the deadlift session. And then we're going to need squat variation. And then we're going to need some overhead. <clears throat> so I'm going to say floor to overhead. So clean and press i'm going to say some overhead in isolation so i'm a massive fan of overhead with leg drive so i'm going to say um pre push press or jerk so in fact let's say push press or jerk And then we'll say, I'm a massive fan of clean in isolation. But bearing in mind, I'm teaching you how to do this from a from a perspective of developing the specific strongman skills. So I'm going to assume that you've got a, a base level of strength and knowledge in how to do these basic exercises that come up in a in a strongman strongman competition. And then in terms of other events, so I'm going to say that in a, in a typical five event comp, we're going to have, we're going to have deadlifts in pretty much every comp. So it's very often deadlift from the floor reps or from, um, or, or for a max. And then the deadlift assistant, what we might put in here, it might be the, so you could see this as, as a secondary deadlift session. So you could either work work on a variation that you feel is going to make your, your main deadlift better, or it might be that you, you're you training for one that specifically might come up in a comp, you know, like a 15-inch a deadlift, an 18-inch deadlift or whatever. So let's continue to fill the gaps in here. So a floor to overhead, that's going to come up in, in every comp. So whether it be log axle dumbbell, so obviously important to keep these in as a staple. So in terms of like other events, we're going to have loading events. So a loading event usually comes up. So that's where we might do like say stone, sandbag, could be keg loading. And then we're going to go for a moving event for speed, speed focus. So that's very often like say a yoke or a, frame or a farmers or something where that where it's very often a sprint in terms of energy systems it might be like a, a t like a 10 to 20 second all-out burst such as say a yoke for 20 meters or a farmers for 30 meters 50 meter drop and turn and then we're going to keep in a, a moving event with an endurance focusing um so with a view to developing the specific, not only energy systems, but a reason why I keep this in as a staple in a program is because actually, even though the energy system is different when you're working for endurance and endurance in the context of strongman might be like 60 seconds or 75 seconds. So I feel like the specific skill requirements when you work in to be enduring are going to be different to when you're working for for speed and and sprint. So I find that it's a really important thing to be. Oh, where's that going? Um, to 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 be training by itself for for in terms of skill development. So we'll go we'll go for those three in, and then I'll give you some some examples of what we can do. So week one, let's let's give you a bit basic deadlift protocol to work with. So it could be say five by five. Week two could be six, six by four. 
week week three could be seven by three. And then we could go for like eight by two on the final set. So the final week. So this could be deadlift from the floor. And over the course of the weeks that you as the the weight goes sorry, as the reps go down, you, you can increase the weight. So obviously you're getting a progressive a linearly progressive block of training on the deadlift. So what you could do on the deadlift assistant, so you could pick something, say, such a let's say 15 inch deadlift. Um, so this is great as it as it's going to go for. So we'll put that in as it, it's going to give you, let's say, fifteen inch deadlift, and we'll go for say four sets of six, and then week week two it could be. say three reps in the tank each set and then week two it could be four sets of six four reps in spare could go to three reps and we're gonna go So you're doing the, the same protocol there. You're getting a you're getting 24 reps of uh, volume in, but you you're hopefully going to get a bit of a progressive stimulus over in terms of weight. You're going to be able to progress the weight a little bit, but still getting a, a get plenty of volume in over the session. So grip, because we we might do say farmers up over in the speed focus element here. So what I like to do just as a general thing to because I, I find that a lot of people miss out the the benefit of, of actually training grip from the program because if they miss farmers out they haven't got really got anywhere else structured in there that that where, where they train it so let, let's say for this this but we're going to go double overhand deadlift And even so much as putting putting a set of it like building up to a set of eight. So you might I say this is one one set, but this might be this might be this might be three sets building up. Like it, this is a very very loose template, and I want you to be creative with with what you do. So uh, the one working set of eight might be a top set, and you might do two to three sets working up. So obviously, I'm going to encourage you to the more practice that you can accumulate, the the better your results and your progression is going to be. But I'm giving you the bare bones here to make sure that you're getting some like a progressive framework where you don't need to think as much. Yeah. So because we because with grip we want the we want the stimulus to be progressive in terms of being more enduring over the course of the set, over the course of the training. Let, let's progress the, the reps on this. So week week four, you might be going for a top a 15 rep max on a to the point where your grip's failing, yeah. And obviously over the course of the weeks, you, you your endurance would have uh, hopefully improved, especially if you're looking to get like start off with like try, try not to drop the weight. That could be the challenge in this progressive progressive framework. It could be try and try not to drop the weight too much from week one. See how close you can keep week one weight to week four weight. So let's go with a squat variation. So a general squat variation that I like. I, I like front squat. So let's go for. Let's give you a, a simple framework in here that you're gonna that you could work with. So I'm gonna say top single with five second pause in the hole. And then from that drop to eighty percent for six by two with no pause. 
So I'm a massive fan for 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 squat variations in a program in terms of being like for me a squat is like one of the most important like one of the most not important because you can like I, I have people who take it out of the program completely in, in certain phases and they get great results but it's a really good assistance exercise where you're going to for strongman where you're going to get a lot of benefit and a lot of carry over to a lot of events so the, the squat that i i like to look look at squats for their for their direct correlation to uh, to overhead events where you're applying leg drive so i i really like the the transfer to all overhead events by impro improving leg strength and not just leg strength but couple that with torso control and basically learning how to keep the torso more upright so for for squat variation i i like do, doing like say because a lot of people might not know that the what the front squat is let's go for Like I, I like people to do a little test, but I like to do the the test with with the harder constraint in than the thing what we're we're actually training in the protocol. So I like people to do it in a way that's going to force the technique to be good, and then I know that they're going to be able to execute the percentages with with even with brilliant technique. So adding the five second pause is going to constrain somebody to be to be really really good and that's going to enable and know that they're going to do these be able to do these six doubles with with just brilliant technique so i'm going to say yeah let's go with that and then week two and then taking the pause where i know they're going to be able to do it yeah so let's go let's move everything a long one. I'm gonna go. Fifteen inch deadlift. Deadlift. squat and we can go we can drop that off what's that of eight yeah so we'll just do eight of these actually Um, we'll go for four by six. And then you can just see the so you see the little progressions that go along. Two reps in spare. Right. Ten. Twelve. Fifteen. So I let it worth noting that I, I like four week. I like four week box. Sometimes I go for six week box, eight week box, two week box. It depends on the on the on the client and the athlete. That's the that's the value which I highly would recommend in, in getting a in hiring somebody for personal coaching because these beautiful blocks that we're going to write out today, in reality, you you very often struggle to to stick stick to them and because some some days you might be three three weeks in you're going for a progression, and it's just not right. Your recovery is not right or whatever for. And you might, you might equally, you might have like be a number of weeks into a progression and something feels really easy and it might actually be appropriate for, for to, to, to push on a little bit and go a little bit heavier or, or, or 
Whereas actually communicating with a coach, you'll be able to keep that progression from A to B and and I suppose navigate through through hurdles and blockages that come al along the way. Very very often proactively as well, like we'll be able to sense that via your feedback that well, actually this is getting a little bit tough. I'm going to swap that variation in there and and keep the progression going rather than come into a come into a roadblock yourself. But I'm going to write this out so so you guys can can use this as a as a template and get cracking by yourself at least. So front squat, top single five second pause, drop to 80% for six by two. Week two, I'm gonna go for say six by two at so I'm gonna go six by three at eight percent. And then week four, we'll drop it back down. Six by two at eighty percent. Focus on speed. And then week four will be a tough session, but doable. We'll go six by four. So the go the goal is on this that the that the technique on every rep is just absolutely phenomenal, and you you reinforcing this per perfect like dip and perfect dip that's going to be transferable to the the floor to overhead so also the benefits of front squats like the you, you're going to get some benefit for you for your leg drive for your deadlifts and also the the loading events like if you think you're loading up an atlas stone or loading a keg it it's always going to be loaded it's always going to be from a position in front of you so yeah i would um I think it's a, a massive, really good staple. Floor to overhead. Let's go with log. Log clean. And push press. And I'm going to say, I, I'm going to pick that as a starter because I find that the skill of, of, of the log is a lot more you it is is a lot more difficult for people to start off with i think i think the if you get better at log your axle and your dumb sorry your axle and your barbell are going to improve and it's going to transfer well to your to your barbell and and your axle clean and press but if you if you train your just train your axle and then you go or just a barbell and then you go for your log in the comp then People seem very surprised when they find a log a lot more difficult than than the than the axle. The the transfer, even if you have like even if you're advanced and you have a really good phase and axle, you go back to log. Sometimes it can feel a lot more difficult though, because obviously the the uh, the technique requirement of controlling this this big object that's the 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 technical requirements of controlling the rack position is a lot more difficult. So obviously we can you can go on. This is another thing where you're gonna gonna get a lot of value working with a coach for technical feedback and stuff like this because so, subtle little cues here and there can make make such a massive difference in terms of controlling the rack position and also learning what assistance exercises are going to be more relevant at each point. But we're gonna go for this. We're gonna go for log, log clean and push press, and we're gonna go for push press because again, if you're a jerker, push press is gonna transfer really nicely to your jerk. If you're a push presser, obviously push press is going to transfer to the push press. But I, ju I just feel that most people are going to are going to be push pressing. Even though I would definitely recommend that people learn how to jerk, but obviously that's more advanced. So log clean and push press. Let's say we one will go for I don't know, say six. Let let's do let's do some singles on this because I feel like it's I, I feel feel like doing. Every minute on the minute, say 75%, 12 to 15 sets of one. So if you if you haven't done log before or you haven't done much of it, like just just build just similar to what we did on the front squats, like just just build up to a single and then use that as like your kind of rough max. So if you build up to 
yeah, build up to a single, then drop 25%, and then do 12 to 15 sets of one. If you can do 15 sets of one, then then brilliant, then do it. And then if you feel that very often, you might find that you, your technique gets better as you go along on this. So I'm going to say that if you feel like your technique goes gets better as you go along on this protocol, I would say do an optional two to three singles if afterwards because don't be surprised if you do your first couple we feel okay and then you go get a bit of a sweat on you get 10 to 10 to 12 in and you feel starting to feel really really good and you finish the session you feel like oh i wish i could do a little bit more so let's go how we progress that in week two would be let's go up to 80 percent and then we'll go for 10 to 12 and then what we might want to do, say week three, is give you maybe give you a little bit more rest on week three to make sure that you can go, let's say eight to ten. And then let's change it from EMOM and we'll go for 60 second rest. Instead of getting like 45 second rest, it should be should be all right. Should be able to get this. Should be um I don't know what's going on there. Okay, right. eight to ten, eighty-five percent. Let's go. Eight to ten, eight to ten by one. Well, let's say seven to ten by one, six to ten by one, and then if you're not having a great day, you're not feeling like too pressured that you're doing really bad. <laughs> so we'll go for, and then week four we might go. I don't know, let's say six singles at 88% or above. And then keep you accountable to the rest. So we'll go 75, 75 second rest on that. Cool. And obviously I'm leaving this open ended. So if you feel like really good, really sharp by the end of week four, and you might you might do a little bit better than you thought. So Let's go for push press or jerk. So let's go axle push press here. No, I'm going to say axle push press or jerk, actually. If you're a jerker, you can practice your jerks here and keep them in. Um, but also, if, you, if you're somebody who hasn't learned how to jerk yet, I would highly recommend. And you, this could be a, a place where you give it a go. So we want a little bit more volume here. And... We want to do it as like a technical focus. So let's say, let's let's keep keep the keep the volume pretty high here. So let's go eight by three, and then let's add a little constraint. So let's do this with a three second pause in the rack on each. Because what we may as well do is nobody nobody's going to. not benefit from getting more comfortable in the rack position so even if you're really advanced your rack position feels really good so even just feeling like you you kind of let the let the bar or the object sink into your body into your body more let's say two seconds actually just so you're not just so yeah so it's not feeling too uncomfortable holding your breath so almost you're using that pause to re-engage sorry to to get you feeling like you you to reinforce like a really good rack position. So you may find that actually doing this, you might find that you, without doing any kind of specific mobility drills, you might find that actually your rack position improves over the course of the, over the course of the weeks. So let's go here. Let's keep the pause in the rack, but we'll go slightly up in weight. And what you'll find at this, when you're pausing in the rack, you might find that, at first, you might be like holding it here with holding a lot of tension. And what we want you to learn with the pause in the rack is actually that if you if your rack positioning is good, we'll be able to pause in a position where your joints are stacked on top of each other. 
which is going to be a lot more energy efficient than holding your arms under tension in the in that rack position. So I don't want to put too much pressure on like a linear progression in terms of weight here. There's just an assistance exercise. So let's change up the rep range a little bit. So we'll go for we'll go here just so there's no expectations on the on the weight. So we'll go. So this is a kind of little approach that I like to like to do in like especially with the assistance exercise, especially if you're driving like the main variation up with the assistance stuff. I don't like to put too much pressure on too long of a of a like linear progression. Maybe two or three weeks at a time, getting like little short bursts of progression seems to seems to work really well. So you'll definitely be able to go up from triples. To, so if you're going triples to doubles, you're definitely going to be able to go up the weight. So we're getting that kind of three weeks of progression in. But expecting to do it with the eight triples is just it's just going to be a lot easier mentally. And then hopefully we'll be able to get another progression on that on that last week. Or what we might even do here to make sure we get a, a progression in load, we might just put it down to one second pause in the rack. So that should feel like a nice little progression there. So on the clean, what we'll do here. So we'll pick, pick a variation that's that's relevant. So obviously if we're doing the, the log for the main variation axle, we could go for, let's say a continental clean. And I like this because it's going to be relevant for obviously a barbell an axle um in terms of specificity like power cleans are great but very rarely do i see people power cleaning in comp it's usually a regardless of whether you do, maybe on dumbbell you see a lot of people power cleaning but like specifically axle and log they're doing like a kind of a hang a hang clean hip hang hip clean on log usually and doing like a variation of a continental clean on the on the axle usually, or a, be, a continental clean, or you see people belt cleaning. So I would, so a continental clean is going to transfer greatly to, to belt cleans. It's going to make your power clean better. It's going to transfer to sandbag, sandbag to loading, sandbag to shoulder, um, a tire flip. If you do heavy tires, you can you can like bump it up and practice your your continental clean. So let's go for let's just keep it simple here, and just go five, five sets of three, and just aim to improve your technique over the course of this over the course of the weeks. So we'll just keep it five sets of three, and if you can increase the weight, great. But a pro, a, a progression in terms of technique is it is a progression that a lot of people undervalue if you keep the keep the weight that the same in fact let's put it in like that let's say well let's say more confident technique and remember especially with assistance exercises we just want to um We just want, there's a lot of value in just getting better at, at them, which executing exercises, we basically we want to do with, with, with exercises that aren't directly going to come up in comp. The whole goal is to make the exercises that are going to come up in comp better. And that sounds really simple, but a lot of people kind of, it, it's all about like, a, a bank account isn't it so if you're you we want to take take from our bank account from our relevant exercise that are going to come up in uh, in competition so with the stuff that are going to be like secondary exercise that aren't going to come up in competition you've got to weigh up whether it is worth it in your context to take from this recovery bank account and give yourself something to recover from or whether that recovery bank account is going to be better use towards some more specific exercises and actually can you still get the a lot of the benefit of the secondary exercise by keeping the weight relatively low and can you get some can you notice an improvement te technique for instance at, at relatively low intensities 
I find, find that that works with works well for a lot of my clients because you can't just you can't just take 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 from um, you you it's all about a it's all, it's all about you, you take more from one thing and it's going to cost it's going to be an opportunity cost from the other thing and again this is why why I highly recommend getting a getting a personal coach somebody who's experienced with scaling back and making it specific to you so yeah the, the, this is a progression that you rarely see is actually just people aiming to progress confidence or progress technique so I, ideally by week four of continental queens like even just teaching yourself you haven't really done done many on week one you're going to be feeling a lot better just by practicing it so again keep keep it light I, and I'll put a little note on that. No heavier than 75% of max or duo. So, yeah, this is giving you, giving you a limit on that. So... Yeah, it, it's going to be a weight that you can that you can definitely do with with good technique because you've already proven that you can do it in the past. And seventy five percent is going to be enough to drive like a kind of neural nervous system stimulus, but it's going to be the, on the lo the low end for triples of of driving that. But it gets you in that. But I would recommend even even maybe even doing lighter, so fifty fifty to seventy five percent so loading events let's pick um let's pick stone for reps stone uh, no in fact let's go let's go yeah let's go stone over yoke or stone for reps let's say so wait one so what I'll give you on stones here is that what, what I like for like just a general training block like this for stone, we need to think practically. So a lot of people, if they've got a, got access to a stone, it, it's very often limited and it might be you have one or two Atlas stones in your garage or it might be that your, your gym only has a couple of Atlas stones or something. So realistically for volume, you might only, you might be limited with lots of options. And even if you have got all the options in the world, sticking to like just a simple block of progressing volume is going to be is going to be hugely beneficial. So, <clears throat> so just so we don't have to like check, so we so we can keep the weight the same. So we can assume that you can over the course of the four weeks, but keep it progressive. So this works for you if you're you've just got access to one stone. Let's go for simple five by three. Pick a weight that's challenging but you can nail good technique with five sets of three so we can go like there and then week two you can go four by four same weight so obviously you're adding a rep and then we can go for say three by five and then week four four sets of five so dead simple but you're progressing the volume linear, linearly over the course of the, the four weeks so obviously your stone loading in terms of technique is going to transfer over to your sandbag loading the reason why i didn't do it the other way around on this example because if you're doing stone loading for reps especially if it's a moderate to challenging weight you're going to have to learn how to use uh, tacky more effectively or as effectively which obviously if you just train in sandbag for the movement transfer over to the stone, it's going to be great in terms of movement, but you're going to, you're going to miss out on that tacky development. Whereas if you just get better at stones, it is and stronger at stones, it is going to transfer to sandbag, but <clears throat> this is, this is your plan. You could do loading events. You could do stone and sandbag. You could do three, two sets, of three on stone, three sets of three on sandbag. You could do five sets of three as you work in sets on stone and you could use the sandbag to warm up. You could use the light sandbag to do three sets of five with. 
Yeah, this is just this is just a base template that is just going to hold you accountable to to some progression on the on the staples. So be creative. So moving events, speed focus. So I'm going to say yoke on this, just because we're going to say I find that yoke footwork transfers nicely to farmers and frames footwork as long as you've got a base level of skill. It's quite similar in terms of times. You're going to be uh, be be able to hit quite similar times usually. And also we're getting the kind of grip stimulus a little bit from the, we've got grip earlier on in the week. So that's just usually the kind of the limiting factor, if you will. Like if we, if the problem is if we, if we'd have done farmers or frame here and then you're not getting that exposure to yoke, which definitely benefits from specificity. I see a lot of people who are really good at the other events and then the, struggle with yoke even though i very often see people who are, who are really good back squatters not very good at yoke because i do feel that it's very it's unique and you do benefit from getting a specific exposure on this so let's say let's use a time constraint to to um to make, to make you keep it fast so we're so, sorry, let's use a time constraint to dictate the load that you use and make sure that you like it's very easy to go too heavy on yoke for a lot of people and, and take from this rank bank account. So I find that actually just giving you kind of some speed targets. So let's go sub eight seconds. So that's probably going to have to be really, really light for a lot of people on the first week, which is going to facilitate you doing doing what seemingly to a lot of people it might seem like a lot of sets but that's that's a prerequisite for sk skill acquisition is is getting that specific exposure like within these sets here you're going to get three or four or five deep i'm going to be able to think about like specific cues and stuff so let's go eight sets of 20 here let's go sub nine seconds so what you'll be able to do here is go a little bit heavier and then what we might say week three let's go six by 30 meters so keeping the volume the same Every 15 minutes. That's it. So what you may have to what you may have to do here, if you might think, oh well, I don't have a 20 meter course or whatever, you might swap this to 10 meter drop and turn and just add on, change this to 11 seconds. Yeah. Um, you might do you might if you have access to a 10 meter course, you might have to do. Um, that's six meters so. You, you may have to do 10 meter you might have to do turns at 10 meters that's fine you just just obviously that adding the the drop and turn is going to take you a little bit longer so just 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 change the change the goal of the the times to accommodate for that so yeah, you got to so basically what you should be able to do here is progress the load over the course of the four weeks, but without using with these constraints, it's going to stop you being going ridiculous. Which, to be fair, a lot of people, if you're starting out with this, like you don't know what is ridiculous and and like what is going to be suitable. Like how hard should it be? So I like providing these constraints and working within constraints for people to kind of self coach and help you self regulate, I suppose. Um, but again, this is going to be a thing that you're going to get a lot more value working with the coach to take the thinking out for you. And if you do stuff and, and, and to also to troubleshoot, that's going to be a big thing. You pick one of these things on here and it's like a beautifully laid out, simple program. But if you do one of these things and it 
something doesn't feel right. Oh, I did my first, it was four sets in on the yoke and my knee didn't feel quite right or whatever. Like if you're working with a coach, you can upload a video and like say, have a, have a, anal, analyze the technique from a, you, you can basically work on cues from a specific standpoint rather than a, a general standpoint. So I could give you a generic cue on each of these, which I will do actually, which are going to generally be valuable but obviously a coach is going to be able to see the problem and provide a solution into in in the like the specific context when you when you need it so we're going to go for endurance focus here we're going to go for sandbag let's go for go for four Sorry, let's go for sandbag carry for, for distance here. Front carry, let's... Sandbag front carry. So what I like about this is, like, you can actually push, your, push to your limit pretty safely on this because when you go to the point of failing, you just drop it and, yeah, every, everything fit, feels good. It's not like dropping, like, a hoosa fell on you or you know, like a, like an awkward object. So even just putting a simple progression in of like, say one foot times 45 seconds on this. And then week two. Uh, 60 seconds. And then week three. One time, 75 seconds, because sometimes it comes up. And then week four, one times 90 seconds. So what you may what you'll you'll find over here, and the reason why it may seem like quite low for a lot of people here, because I find that it's it I find this and grit and from from experience from coaching people full time for years, I find that the easiest thing for people to drop off on or kind of skive on a little bit is like the the grip thing. People don't seem to do it so willingly unless it comes up in a comp. So this is this is an ideal way of keeping it in the background. And same with front carries. People don't seem too keen, but everybody wants to deadlift and overhead and do some farmers and stuff, but they don't seem too keen on, on doing this stuff. So keeping it in like, like th this is like a minimum effective dose. This is something that may seem not very kind of, this may, may not seem like it's very much for a lot of people, but actually uh, I've used these protocols number, num like countless number of times that have, have resulted in brilliant competition performances or even like say if we're doing this in like kind of an, a non-specific off-season block and then people someone gets a oh i've got my next comp coming up six weeks out and it's got conan's in or it's got conan's wheel in and most people are like oh conan's isn't it's tough or whatever i'm gonna need to start working on my endurance or whatever You've already been doing this in the background and even if it's like a real just a really like sandbag or even at times in my own training or with clients i've had people just holding like an an object in that 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 position so e even like say like a swiss ball or just something that that puts your arms in the same position so you need to learn how to condition how to move your legs appropriately while, whilst your arms are in that position and um and yeah you can get get a good train, training effect just from doing that so I, I would say on the on the front carries keep keep them light in the in the initial block and then aim to just do the same weight but but you're going going further further each week so in terms of splitting it up right so this is this is a thing that i want to be quite unique with actually so what you could do is you could go for very common thing that we see in strongman is people will do like a deadlift day and then like an over people will often do like say a bodybuilder split where they'll do like say maybe a, a chest day or whatever they'll do bench and then they'll do 
uh, pressing, so to help with their overhead or whatever. And then people do like a deadlift day, which seems pretty universal. Um, and then very often like a another, another upper body day where they might be more specific with the implement, maybe like say using the log or applying leg drive or whatever. And then very often a say another lower body day where they might do some squats and then some moving events and stuff. So a limiting factor with this event with an upper bo lower body split, like I've done that through three phases like years ago, but the limiting thing with that for, for strongman is like you're spending half your time doing upper body when it's only ever 20% of a competition, sometimes even like 16, 16% 16 if you're doing a six event comp and there's one overhead in there. So, Doing like say a variation of lo lower body training, like as most of your training training time is going to yield better results in my, in my opinion. So a common uh, a kind of framework that that I generally like would be like a deadlift day, a deadlift focused day. I say a deadlift focused day because your deadlift might be it might that might be a neural protocol on that day where you're really pushing the deadlift, but then also you might have like say some. But I very often, if someone's someone needs to improve their overhead or whatever, like if their overhead's a little bit behind the other events, I'll very often put overhead on the deadlift day at the end where they're working with the skill folks or whatever. Um, and then they, they come in for their overhead focus session where they're going heavier and then they have like a uh they're already feeling sharp from they've been sharpening the saw from the from the from the deadlift session and then so if you if you're training through th like say th three sessions a week or you were focusing on your strongman skills three sessions a week that that would be that seems like a pretty good thing that what well, like I, like I'll often teach I very often teach people starting off on this would be like a deadlift focus day uh an overhead focus day and then like say uh, a moving event or an, a, a moving and loading event kind of day if you will so i find that this works universally in terms of being practical so whether somebody's training at a commercial gym and then they train at a um and they train at a strongman gym at the weekend or whatever they train they can or whether the they can just practically get the strongman equipment out on one session a week then great that then great that that works brilliantly um but i do find that if you work at a, 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 a sorry if you train at a place where you can train the events more frequently i would I, I i think there's a lot of value in that like at the the gym where we where we train like we take advantage of that especially during competition phases when we're when we're training for competition specifically we'll say we're deadlifting sorry say we're training four times a week we will very often do a little bit of of each exercise on on every on every single day but obviously there'll be like one day where you do the main lift you know say for instance you're doing um Say t take the deadlift for instance. You might do your your heavy neural protocol on on one day, and then another day you're doing speed work, like really really light. At the end of like say, find that works well at say a lower body, uh, say after squats or whatever. And then you might have another day doing moderate volume tagged on to say when you're doing your overhead session, and then you might have a might have another day where you work with just a skill focus from like a strongman um specific height it might be like say a, a silver dollar deadlift on your event day but this is just giving you an idea of um, of different scenarios so what i've done here is i've just given you a, I, i've never seen anybody do this before but this is just giving you like a completely flexible way way to do to do it so you could split it up into you could just look look at these exercises you could do those four as exercise one then you could do these three as uh, sorry as work workout one these three as workout two these three as workout three that that would work really well and then you, you like you, you you're deadlifting you, you're doing like your static lower body stuff on one day and then you're doing your your overhead 
on another day and then you're doing like the kind of events on a on a day by themselves so it might be really practical to do it like that or you might find that say if you've got access to say a gym like ours when you can train events like kind of when you want and you're not queuing up for equipment and stuff you might actually find that say splitting it up like you might do workout one might be deadlift and then it might be your kind of pressing from the rack And then it might be your loading events as session one. Session two might be your floor to overhead as your main lift, as your main like kind of neural stimulus that day. And then you might do 15 inch deadlift light. And then you might do your stone loading. And then on day three, you might do your squats. And then some cleans, you might do your cleans as a warm up for squats and then move on to your, say, yoke for, for speed. And then do your sandbag carries as a finisher. You might split this into four sessions. You might do, right, well, one day I'm going to do, I'm going to do my deadlift and assistance. The next day I'm going to do overhead and main overhead and cleans then i'm going to do loading events and grip on day three you're going to do the moving events on day four and then you might do like basically spread the workout over over the uh, over what you have available and don't be afraid to like be unique if you find that say things couple well together in your your schedule then don't be afraid to do that don't don't fit don't, don't be like, oh, so-and-so said I have to do these on that day. Like, realistically, the the way that kind of programming has, has gone is it's based on previous data that's uh, a lot of a lot of the data is bit of people being successful is actually down to convenience. A lot of that is like a lot of people train, like say a bodybuilder split or whatever, like the the in like if you had if you had uh, like like what what would be beneficial about doing like say a bodybuilder split on a kind of say an off season phase if you've got sixty minutes in the gym do you think you're going to be able to accumulate more work if you warm up for deadlift once and then you do loads of like hip extension back extension say accessories for like the the backside of your body do you think you're going to be able to do more work in sixty minutes doing that or doing some deadlifts and then warming up your your anterior chain and your shoulders and stuff for do a bit of log at the warm-up time and then go and set up the yoke for the you, <clears throat> like it's going to be great if you've got loads and loads of time or if your gym's set up so you can go in between but realistically you're still going to have those warm-up sets to factor in so <clears throat> so yeah hopefully you can see why why things are just like say born out of um or, or the, they are a certain way just because because they the the practical to do so it do, but just because they're practical to do so and they've got loads of people getting results does that mean that it's optimal not necessarily and does that mean that it's optimal for your context only 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 you know and you you can decide that so take ownership think about practically what in when your unique scenario like what's going to be the best way over any given training week to fit these kind of what three what is it like two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten protocols? And this is just re really, really simple. Let's get, let's say, um, stiff bar to fit these. Not uh, one, two, three, four, five to fit these ten protocols. Fit these ten, ten progressive protocols in your week. So I find that if you you take the approach of um, being look at this as like a flexible training training approach where you're getting progressive over like structured progression on 10 of the 10 staple exercises that are going to make you better at the strongman competition and fit these it you you only you're the only person that knows like how what's going to be the optimal way of fit these into your training week like 
with others like what what days do you work like what what's your shift pattern like what days are you gonna do you feel the most energetic what days are you are after say days that you have with your family which days do you feel more rushed and you've got to get home quickly from work so you can kind of mold these these very and put put it in like is it going to be better on one day that you you are you going to get benefit if you could train twice in a day like because that fits into your schedule like an hour in the morning an hour in the night or whatever like is that uh, and if you did that how how can you maximize what you can what you can do so another way to another thing to factor in would be like how you ask yourself with this like bearing in mind that this is like the the kind of just a minimum progressive structure that i'm giving you to kind of take the thinking out but i encourage you to and, and even even clients that look like say i coach personally i always I, like it, it'd be more specific and more intricate to their specific whatever their goals are but i, I always like to leave like a little bit of wiggle room or a little bit of opportunity for the for, for them to to kind of do more if they want to like i love it if my clients say right well i did um stiff bar deadlift the other day five by five and i knew i needed to get my 15 inch deadlift and double overhand i'd already done my double overhand as a warm-up i knew what weight I was doing on my 15 inch deadlift so i had about 20 minutes longer felt really good on the five by five so i put another 10 kilos on and i did a triple and i feel great i feel really confident that i've managed um to do an extra uh, it's given me really confidence for when the when the weights go up in the coming weeks. I feel like my my technique was good. Recovery feels great. Brilliant. I absolutely love that when clients do that. Or if somebody said, right, be, before the singles on log, I did an extra half an hour just work working on technique and uh, working through some complexes. Working, for, I tried some extra split jerks with the log. I tried. Um, I did lots of work with it with the empty log to make sure that my um, my technique was good before I started my the protocol that I'm doing for the the training day. Yeah, I think that's great. Like, um, somebody might be training yoke, and they might say, "Right, well, I've done loads of upper back stability work, and I've done loads of shoulder external rotation. I've done loads of like, say, bodybuilding prehab stuff for my upper back. That I feel like when I go to the yoke, I'm in a much better position to <clears throat> to hit the position that I'm supposed to." brilliant absolutely brilliant so this is this is a this is this is what i want you to look at this structure as as like the 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 requirements to get better at the strongman lifts so if you you do extra work if you want to do some bodybuilding alongside this or bodybuilding's always made you feel good like do, do that if you want to do some um prehab stuff or like if you you have like a 20 minute warm-up protocol that you do before every session that makes you feel really good brilliant do that don't discontinue it um just just make sure that whatever time you have in your training window that you that the weights that you pick on this are scaled appropriately to fit in the stuff that you want to do to make you feel good say if you want to do some do do like continue with a weightlifting session that you do as well like brilliant that because that's going to contribute to or like going to have so much transfer to what you're doing if you still want to do some powerlifting alongside this or plug in your powerlifting template within this you know do like say right well as well as doing my front squats i do some low bar squats as well um that's absolutely brilliant right so don't discontinue those but somebody like like if you if, if you got coaching with me or like say any of my coaches we, we'll always focus on the the things that are going to get you the results at the strongman competition at the at the competition so we've used this uh, use this approach to have to build countless national champions in strongman um international champions set strongman world records like we, we've we've proven that taking the taking this kind of simplistic approach really really does work and like put putting your put putting the putting the stuff that you want to do or the stuff that makes you feel good in alongside this absolutely brilliant but for me like for me as a coach i'm not just gonna like i don't like to put ge just generic things in there for the sake of it yeah if you if you say we're we're like 
very often a lot of people that are coached they, they have like certain exercises that they want to keep in that unless they communicate to me that they want to keep it in like I wouldn't put in an example is like bench press I have several clients who who, who like to bench press because they feel good when they bench press like would I put this in as a staple for to get better at the strongman events certainly not but do I have top class clients who have been ben bench pressing yeah yeah, but uh, people podium at international competitions that keep bench pressing have kept bench pressing in the three months prior to the competition because it makes them feel good and they, they've they've always done it and they and they they have like goals within that that makes the whole training process like re really beneficial and uh, sorry really positive and yeah, so y you need to ask yourself rather than thinking about doing this exactly do this as like the bare minimum is that what you're getting progression on on these kind of things that i've laid out for you but put the stuff in as well that you enjoy that that makes you kind of want to like yeah that, that you enjoy and keeps you engaged in the whole the whole thing but i suppose what i'm d doing with this stuff is giving you stuff that you need to kind of narrow your scope and focus and like double down your intent on and uh, it will be hugely beneficial. So what I'll do now is give you an example of like a generic cue that you could do on a, on each one. So let's say week one, I'll put in cue. So a cue could be lock out as, smooth, as fast as speed off the floor. So uh, on every rep here on the deadlift, that uh, they have to they, they have to keep the lockout smooth and be true to the so that so there's no th this is going to make, make them like feel like the the reps aren't grindy for instance yeah a very common thing when people are following like a protocol by themselves is it's very easy to go a bit too heavy and put a little bit too much weight on so you're sacrificing for so yeah so a simple cue like that might work so 15 inch deadlift so you might. You might start with um, try feet wider over a course of sets, assess strongest position. So double overhand dead left. So let's give us a cue for that. So. Front squat, let's give a, a good front squat cue. So cue in hips. Make sure hips and shoulders rise at the same time out of hole. So make sure that you're not kind of getting, you're chasing the weight too much. So you get into the bit where your bum comes up before and knocks your shoulders forward. Because remember, that's not going to transfer so well to the overhead stuff. It's going to be about how you can maintain the vertical torso. Log clean and push for us. So let's go push. Push back on press. So focus on pushing, pushing, pushing behind you. Because if you think the log has got to get from, it's a common cue where people are focused on pushing up. Like if you think on, on log push press, actually we want to, we're going to be starting here, but we want to end. If we start here in our hands, we actually want to end with the center of the log here to get it stacked over kind of a uh, skeleton. So the log is gonna to have to go back a little bit. So that's a good cue. So I think push back and also like the like common cues that you hear, you know, like people say about say, keeping your head back or, or till till it's locked out. So this this will take care, care of that with this cue. If you're thinking about pushing back. Um, another cue is pe people folks like focusing on getting the getting locked out before you bring your head through. So axle push press and jerk. Let's go. Let's go for all 
pause out pause overhead on each rep i know we've added in a pause in the rack but let's add a let's add a pause overhead to make sure that the thing that i said the push back on the press that we've that we're finding a true overhead position that with the joint stacked and that'll help you the following week going into the the pushback cue Um, so continental queen so let's go imagine like a hot potato so so on on the so you're not resting up you don't don't rest the you're going to keep the axle moving all the way through so you're going to bounce 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 and pop 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 Stone for rep, so let's go. Move the feet in after lap. So when you've lapped it, try scooching your feet in to give you that kind of extra little bit of height. So yoke. Let's go split stand start on all. So staggered stand, so you're replicating the the stance that you're going to be when you get moving in terms of footwork rather than standing up with two feet and then stepping find that this might give you a little bit of a smoother transition sandbag front carry find rack position arms feel like they flop around back so if you find your rack position that real that's really good, you'll you'll feel that your your arms can just like kind of relax around the back. So obviously you're gonna to have to adjust your pelvic position and your your torso to to find this position. But you see a lot of people go wrong on this where they'll kind of they'll be squeezed in the bag and they'll be limited by by how much their arms can hold on. Whereas if you find a decent rack position, you're gonna be gonna be absolutely fine with this. So yeah, I've given you. Nice linear progression on there. I've given you a generic cue on each thing, but just fit, feel free to like I'm. I'm just plucked to plucked a variation out of your, uh, like just out of the sky here. So if you feel like you want to say add strict presses in to the overhead protocol, do them afterwards. Brilliant. If you felt like you want to do more deadlifts and you want to do more deadlift variations as well, brilliant. Like if you want to do, say, an extra, pro like, say, stone for rep, stone protocol and you want to do work with a keg and add events in as well, fantastic. If, say, you do the moving events and then you 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 want to, like, say, what about other events? What about tire flip? What about crucifix hold? What about front, front hold? Like, add those in. Feel free. And remember, this is just like a kind of, just a brilliant template that, I've called it a beginner strongman, but but to be honest, like I've given, I've given, I've used this structure with load, loads of like intermediate and advanced athletes, and then built the other stuff around it. But you take the the main bit to the these protocols, and like you, you you're gonna you're gonna have some uh, brilliant progression. So what I'm gonna do with this, I'm gonna. What I'm going to do with this, I'm going to add this sheet. So I'm going to add this sheet. I'm going to save this sheet and then add it to the link in description. If you'd like this sheet, and I will, I will recommend that you take this, use it as a template. You can literally go for, you could literally duplicate this and just change the exercises in here for your next block. And use this use the same progressive template. What's so brilliant about it is the fact that you can you can make it you can make it stick your you can make this template fit your split. So if you're training four days a week, two days a week, if you train strongman three days a week, but then do CrossFit another day, weightlifting, bodybuilding another day, you can make it all fit. You can just scale the intensities appropriately. But I've just demonstrated how you can get progression within within each block. So simply, I've just plucked one out of the top of my head. Like the, the the it's infinite the amount of progression that you that, that you can have using the template. So if you would like personal coaching, so just get I'll put a link in description. Just contact me. 
and we'll get we'll get something sorted. If if you just want this template and you want to you, you just want to take it for a ride by yourself, I, I'll put the link in the description and get it sent to your email address. If you want to use this and copy it with, if you're a coach and you want to use this template as a as a thing to edit and send like use with clients, then p please do that. Um, because this will get you better at strongman. And this is the important thing. Like I, my business is built around getting people better at strongman, strong woman competitions, getting results in strongman, strong woman competitions. Ideally, I, I like to couple that with getting them stronger, but you can get massive. Like I see so many people, they focus so much on getting strong that they don't necessarily get good at, at the strongman events, whereas actually this template is going to get you really good at the strongman events and provide the progressive framework to get that you can get stronger in as well, and also provide the a framework that you can put in other stuff. Like if you're working with if you're working with a different working with a different coach, but you want to put this this kind of protocol alongside it, you just scale the weights right back. But you can still get the progressive framework within that, or you, or you'll find that the stuff that you're doing with your coach will be, oh well, actually that that protocol that I'm doing with my coach now, that's actually takes care of that section. Um, oh, I'm only missing three sections out of this template with my coach. I'll just add these in. I'll add them into warm up, or or just tell your coach that you've seen that you've seen this thing and you think that it it'd be a good idea to add add these certain things in. Where where would be the the best place that your coach thinks to put them so yeah let me let me know how you get on with this so link in description i'll send it to your doodah so your email address